Do you know you can make art out of almost anything? Yeah, it's true. In the past, I've made all sorts of creations from the most unlikely of objects. I once made a picture with my old socks. It was very pongy. And one time, I even painted a fantastic picture onto a balloon. Now, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I, Mr Maker, will make art from... Again, I'm just doing a bit of washing up to clean up some of my messy stuff. I've been cleaning up my mixing bowls, my ooh, paint brushes, yeah, and my rubber chicken. What's that doing in there? Oh, well, this is just taking far too long. I think I need to use some of my... Super duper bubbly washing up liquid. <laughs> right. Whoa. Ooh, oh, I think I might have used a bit too much. But look at these fantastic bubbles. <gasps> bubbles. I love bubbles. Oh. and they've given me a great idea. Try blowing a brilliant bubble picture. It's great fun to do and looks amazing. Let's make it. We'll need some things from the doodle drawers. <laughs> some paper. Some brightly coloured paint. Some gloopy PVA glue. A trombone? <laughs> no, we don't need this. But it was good fun. Some water. And some washing up liquid and a straw. Oh! To make a bubble pitcher, like this one here, you first need to make sure that you put on an apron or some old clothes, as this can get a bit messy. This picture has three colours in it, so we need to make three different coloured bubble mixtures. So get yourself a cup and put two squirts of washing up liquid into it. Now put in one splodge of gloopy glue. Now add three drops of water. And finally, three drops of coloured paint. Hoo -hoo. There we go. Now we need to give it a stir with a straw. And when that's all mixed, do the same for the other two colours. Washing up liquid, glue, water, paint. Washing up liquid, glue, water, paint. Now you're ready to blow some bubbles with your straw. But when you're doing it, remember to blow and not suck. That's blow and not suck. Let's do it. Now take your white paper and very gently lay it on top of the cup. So that it makes a print. Look at that! Isn't it fantastic? Let's do another one. Wow! Now let's do the same in another colour. Oh, fantastic! One more colour now. What a great bubble pattern! Now we just need to leave it to dry. And you can use your bubble paintings for all sorts of things. How about bubbly wrapping paper? Or a bubbly birthday card? Bubbles are brilliant! The only problem is, once you start bubbling, you can't stop. <laughs> hey, I didn't 
didn't mean you, Doodle Draws. Doodle Draws! Do you know you can make art out of almost anything? Yeah, it's true. In the past, I've made all sorts of creations from the most unlikely of objects. I once made a picture with my old socks. It was very pongy. And one time, I even painted a fantastic picture onto a balloon. Now, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I, Mr Maker, will make art from... Cotton buds? That will be a challenge. But hang on, hang on. They're giving me an idea. Let's try something. Try making a crazy dancing skeleton made out of cotton buds. Let's make it. As well as some cotton buds, we'll need some other things from the doodle drawers. Come on. A piece of coloured paper. A glue stick. And some scissors. Wow! Now, to make a cotton bud picture, like this one here, you need a pile of cotton buds. There we go. Very nice indeed. Now we need to get some more cotton buds and very carefully cut them in half. Now, be careful because scissors are sharp. Now, take some more cotton buds and very carefully just cut the fluffy ends off them. Again, keep going until you've got enough fluffy ends to make a pile. Now, you should have a pile of the long cotton buds, the half cotton buds and the short fluffy ends. If you have, then you're ready to make your picture. This is the fun bit. Take a long cotton bud and glue it down in the centre of the paper. Now take two half buds and place one above the long cotton bud and one below it to make a long line. Now stick half buds either side of this long line. It's the skeleton's rib cage. Now, for each arm, you will need one, two, three long cotton buds, and one, two, three, four, five fluffy ends for the fingers. Arrange your skeleton's arms so they're waving in the air, and then stick them down. Now, to make this triangle shape, under the rib cage here, we need one long cotton bud and two half buds. For his legs, you will need three long cotton buds. For his feet, you will need three half buds. And for his toes, you will need five fluffy ends. Do the other leg and stick them all down. Now, what's missing? Hmm. 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 Don't worry, I know, it's his head! Yes, and for his head, let's use some half buds. And some fluffy ends for the mouth, nose and eyes, like this. And when you're happy with your skeleton's head, glue it all down into place. And there you have it, my new buddy! Get it? Buddy! <laughs> it's Bones the Skeleton! And you could try lots of other ideas too. How about... A fantastic fish skeleton with lots of little fish bones. Or even this! A brilliant cotton bud boat! All works of art made from just glue and cotton buds. See, I told you we could do it. <laughs> oh, well done. Oh, thank you, Mr Skeleton. Shall we dance? 
shake those bones, Mr. Skeleton. Whoa, boys! What a mover! <laughs> oh, great! It's Minute Make Time! Come on! <laughs> Here's what we're going to make today. Brilliant bugs on a stick. And for this, you will need a stick and some pipe cleaners that have been cut into 18 small pieces. We'll also need some air drying clay and some googly eyes. Now you can get these from an art and craft shop. I'll be back in a tick. Whew. I've got them. Here they are. Let's have a look. We've got one large ball, one medium sized ball and one small ball. And we've also got six googly eyes, and they're made up of two large googly eyes, two medium-sized ones, and then two smaller ones. Great! Now, do you think it's possible to make this in just one minute? No way! Really, Toki? Well, I think I can do it, although I will have to be very quick. Don't worry, I'll remind you how to do it at the end. Are you ready? Great! Let's make it in a minute! Get your stick and then squidge on the balls of clay. That's the large one at the front, the middle size one in the middle, and the small one on the end like that. And then start putting in the legs. Now that's six legs for each creature, three on each side. There we go. Let's get these in as quickly as possible. There we go. In you go. Brilliant. Three for this one. We'll better squish that one down a bit more. There we go. And now the other side. Here we go. Three legs here. Faster, faster! Oh, I know I'm going as quick as I can, Toki! Okay, there we go. And now we need to put on the eyes. Two big eyes for the big bug two medium-sized eyes for the medium-sized bug and two small eyes for the small bug! I've done it! Only just... Phew! That was close, wasn't it? And if you've got more than a minute, you can paint your bugs on a stick and cover them in a layer of gloopy PVA glue to make them even stronger. In fact, you can decorate your bugs however you like. These bugs have been painted in different colours and covered in glitter. Oh, very sparkly. Bugs on sticks made in a minute. Why don't you try it? Here's a reminder of how to do it. Let's go back to the beginning and take another look. Push three different size balls of clay onto a stick. Then push short bits of pipe cleaner into the clay for the legs. Finally, stick on googly eyes to finish your bugs on a stick. Why don't you try and make it in a minute? Again. <laughs> I was just looking up at the stars. I've always wondered what it would be like to be up in space. Whoa! <laughs> Wouldn't it be great if you could paint in space? I expect it'll be a bit tricky. <laughs> whoa, whoa, wait, wait, oi! Right, here we go. <laughs> whoa, 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 come back! <laughs> Mmm, what a great daydream. And who knows, I might actually get to paint in space one day. Plus, it's given me a great idea. Let's try something. Try making a splatter space picture that's out of this world. Let's make it. We'll need some things from the doodle drawers. <laughs> some paper and a pen. A glue stick and some scissors. Some paint and some sticky tape. An old toothbrush and a piece of card. Whoa! Now, to make a splatter space picture like this one here, first, make sure that you put down some old paper or some newspaper, as this can get a bit messy. Now, let's mix some white paint with a little bit of water. Let's do the same with yellow paint and red paint to make three different runny paint mixtures. Don't forget to give them all a good stir. There. 
Now we're ready for the really fun and really messy bit. So let's get a piece of black paper like that and then get the old toothbrush and put it into the white paint mixture. And then get our piece of card ready and we're going to hold the toothbrush at the bottom of the paper. And with the card, scrape towards you. Wow, look at that. What a great effect. Now you must remember to scrape towards you when you do this and not away from you because you'll splatter yourself in paint. Keep going until your paper is covered in splatters. <laughs> when it's dry, put it to one side and get another piece of coloured paper, like this brown one here, and start ripping out lumpy crater shapes like this. Now we can put this on top of our splattered space pitcher to make the craters. And now add some extra details with a black pen. Next, how about adding some extra planets in the background? Just splatter some red and orange paper with the red and yellow paint we made earlier. Then find something that's round, like this plastic cup, and draw around it to get the perfect circle shape. You can even draw around the inside of a sticky tape roll to get smaller circles. You can do as many as you like. When you're happy with your circles, cut them out. But remember to be careful, because scissors are sharp. Oh, all right. <laughs> These will give us our splattery planets and we can place them wherever we like. Now, what do all crazy space planets need? A crazy space alien. Let's draw one. It can look however you like, but this one's going to have three eyes. Ooh. <laughs> There, now let's paint it. And then when it's dry, we can add some extra detail with a black pen. And then very carefully cut it out. Now put your alien on the planet. He'll look really good hiding behind one of the craters. And when you're happy with your picture, glue everything down. There we have it, a fantastic splatter space picture. Splattering is great fun. Oh, I'd love to meet an alien one day. Hello, Mr Maker. Will you come and visit me sometime? Oh, thank you, Mr Alien. I'd love to come and visit you. <laughs> I'm looking at the night sky through my telescope. <laughs> there's the North Star. And there's the plough. The night sky is so beautiful. I love it when the moon shines brightly and the stars twinkle down from up on high. <laughs> oh, look. Even wise old Mr Owl likes it too. <laughs> oh, and that gives me a great idea. Let's make something. Try making twinkling twigs and a pine cone owl. Sparkly. Let's make it. We'll need some things from the doodle drawers. Come on. Some twigs and a pine cone. Some glitter and a pencil. Loopy PVA glue and a glue stick. Some coloured paper and an old plastic lid. Whoa! <laughs> now we also need some googly eyes and some air drying clay. Now we can get these from an art and craft shop. I'll be back in a tick. I've got them. Here we are. There are two. 
googly eyes. And here's the air drying clay. Now you can make your very own twinkling twigs. That's a perfect home for a woodland creature. Just start off by moulding your air drying clay into a plastic lid like this. Squeeze it down and push it all the way out to the edges. Now we're doing this because it's going to hold all of our twinkling twigs in place. Now we can start arranging our twigs. Now you can arrange them however you like, but how about we start with this nice big large twig here and push it into the clay at the front. Now we can start with some other twigs. How about we get this rather tall twig and push it in at the back? Now you'll notice that some of my twigs have dried leaves on them. Now these look great, it really adds to the effect. Choose as many twigs as you like, push them into the clay and leave it to dry. <laughs> then to make your twigs twinkle, stand your clay base on some old paper or an old tray and cover the whole thing in gloopy glue. And now for the fun bit, shake on some glitter. And once it's covered in glitter, shake any extra glitter off and leave it to dry again. Once your twinkling twigs are dry, you can make a woodland creature to go in them like this pine cone owl. So let's get some coloured paper and draw a curvy shape like this. There we go. Now on some different coloured paper, draw the same curvy shape but a bit smaller. And last but not least, let's get a piece of yellow paper like this and draw a triangle. Now this is going to be the beak for our owl. Now we can cut all of our pieces out, but be careful because scissors are sharp. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Mm. Now glue the pieces together to make the owl's eyes and beak like this. Then there's a finishing touch. Let's add two googly eyes. There's one and there's two. It's the face of our owl and we can stick it onto our pine cone with some gloopy glue. Finally, glue your owl onto the big twig at the front using lots of gloopy glue. You might want to hold your owl in position as it starts to dry. And when everything is dry, gently take the clay out of the lid like this. And there, look at it. Isn't it sparkly? And you can even try making other things twinkle amongst your twinkling twigs. How about making a lot of twinkling twigs with a pine cone and card fox and a little conker robin? Why don't you try making your very own twinkling twigs? A perfect present for your friends and family. <laughs> Here's what we're going to make today. An elephant peg holder. A helpful elephant who can hold your photos and other important things. Now, to make an elephant peg holder, you will need some glue, a peg, a pen, a pair of scissors, some card and two white stickers. Now, if you haven't got white stickers, don't worry. You could always draw circles on white paper and cut them out. Yeah. Now, do you think it's possible to make this elephant peg holder in just a minute? Not a chance. Really? Let's find out. I'm going to have to move very quickly. But don't worry, I'll remind you how to do it at the end. Are you ready? Let's make it in a minute. Start the clock. Let's go. Get your card and draw an arch shape like that and two ears and then also a trunk shape there. Now get your scissors and very carefully cut these shapes out. There's one bit there and now cut out the body. Be careful. 
Oh! I'm going to be very careful, Toki. Don't worry. Halfway. Round we go. Right, there's his body. Now, if I glue my peg... Quicker! Stick it onto the elephant and then glue the trunk there. And then put the stickers on for eyes. I've just about done it! Just in time! Thank you! Oh, that was close, wasn't it? But if you've got more than a minute, you can add some extra details to your elephant, like dots for eyes, some wrinkles for his trunk, and even some toes. And your helpful elephant is great for holding photos. Look at that handsome chap. A helpful elephant peg holder made in a minute. Why don't you try it? And here's a reminder of how to do it. Let's go back to the beginning and take another look. First, draw an elephant's head and ears. Don't forget the trunk. Then cut out what you've drawn. And stick on a peg. Stick the trunk to the peg and two stickers for eyes and your elephant peg holder is ready. Try making it in a minute. Here's a magnet. And it likes to stick to things that are made of metal. A bit like... Whoa! Whoa! A can! Whoa! 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 Some paper clips! Whoa! Oh, a fridge! Or a shiny metal statue of the world's most handsome artist. Ooh. Anyway, the point I'm making is that magnets are great. And they've just given me a fantastic idea. Let's make something. Why not make a funny face magnet out of tin foil, tissue paper and a magnet? Let's make it! We'll need some things from the Doodle Drawers! Are you coming? <coughs> tin foil and tissue paper. <coughs> some paint. <coughs> some glue. <coughs> and some wool and a black pen. <coughs> Whoa! <laughs> We'll also need some googly eyes and a magnet. Now we can find these in an art and craft shop. I'll be back in a tick. <coughs> I've got them. Here they are. Our googly eyes and the magnet. Now to make your very own funny face magnet, like this one here, First, scrunch up a big ball of tin foil. Let's get scrunching. <laughs> there we go. Now we've got ourselves a tin foil ball. We're going to push down on it so we get a flat bottom. There we go. Our ball has now got a flat bottom so it can sit down on the table. Now, let's roll three small balls of tin foil, one for a nose and two for the ears. Here we go. Now let's glue them on with a glue stick. Start with the nose. And now the ears. There. Now let's cover everything in a thick layer of gloopy glue and some ripped up pieces of tissue paper. Now, make sure you cover all of the foil on the front and the back and then leave it to dry. Now decide who you want your funny face to be and paint it. Now, to make funky hair, we need to cut small pieces of wool like this. 
Now you can use whatever colour you like, but I think I'll choose red. Yes. Be careful though, because scissors are sharp. Ooh. <laughs> When you've got some pieces like that, we need to fold them in half into a sort of loop and glue them behind the ears. And use some smaller pieces of wool for eyebrows. Then add details with a black pen. And stick on some googly eyes. There we go. Now our funny face magnet is nearly finished. We just need to add a magnet like this. It looks a bit different to the one that I had earlier, but don't worry, it still works and will still stick to anything that's metal, like this metal button here. <laughs> Very clever. So let's turn over our funny face and stick it to the back. And when it's dry, your funny face magnet is ready to stick wherever you want, as long as it's made of metal, like this. Very clever indeed. And there are lots of funny face magnets that you can try. <laughs> Look at this one. It's got spiky hair made out of pipe cleaners. Or how about this old lady with pipe cleaner glasses and white cotton wool hair? You can make whoever you want. Maybe a princess with long hair and a pointy hat. Or even a circus ringmaster with a curly moustache. Brilliant funny faces made thanks to the magic of... Magnet! Whoa! Whoa! Oh, I think I'll stick to smaller magnets in the future. Oh. It's Minute Make Time! <laughs> yes, it's Minute Make Time, and here's what we're going to make today. A pine cone creature. Look, it's a pine cone bird. Now, to make one of these, you will need a black pen, a glue stick, of course, a pine cone, some coloured card, some scissors, some feathers and some googly eyes that you can find in an art and craft shop. I'll be back in a tick. I've got them. Right, here are our googly eyes. Now, do you think it's possible to make this in just one minute? Not a chance. Well, let's find out. I'm going to have to be very quick, but don't worry, I'll remind you how to do it at the end. Let's make it in a minute. Start the clock. Let's get our coloured paper and draw a bird's head with a long neck like that and also a beak. And let's cut these out very carefully with scissors. Now remember, scissors are sharp, so you might want to ask an adult to help you with this bit. There we go, there's the beak. And let's cut out the head very carefully, all the way along and round and down the other side. There we go, right, let's get some glue and stick the beak on. There it is, and now he needs some eyes. All right, come back here, you, that's it. There's one, and there's two. Oh, there we go. Right, now we need the pine cone, and hopefully that will stick in there, which it does. Now we need some feathers. Let's get some feathers stuck in. There we go, there's one in there. One in there, go on, in you go. One in there, and one in there. And just about enough time for one more, there. Phew, that was close. But if you've got more than a minute, you can make other sorts of pine cone creatures. This one is made with a different coloured card and spotty feathers. Or how about this pine cone dog with a tail, neck and legs made out of pipe cleaners? <coughs> all right, all right, keep your cone on. Pine cone creatures made in a minute. Why don't you try it? Here's a reminder of how to do it. Let's go back to the beginning and take another look. Draw your bird's body and beak on two pieces of coloured paper. Then carefully cut them out. 
stick the beak onto the body, add the googly eyes, and finally stick your head and the feathers into the pine cone to finish your pine cone creature. Why don't you try and make it in a minute? Again. I'm just practicing my silly faces. Look. <laughs> oh, that's a really funny face. And I know what will make it even funnier. A big silly nose. <laughs> no, not this big silly nose. I mean a nose like this. <laughs> oh, that's very funny. Let's try one more. <laughs> yes, now that is a really funny face. And you know, this has given me a great idea. Let's try something. <laughs> try making a funny furry monster face with a big nose. Let's make it. We'll need some things from the doodle drawers. Some paint and a paintbrush. A washing ball. Some paper and coloured card. Glue and a ruler. A black pen, stickers and a pom-pom. Oh. Now, to make a monster face like this funny one here, you need to get a piece of coloured card like this. Now, this can be any colour you like. Now get a small square of card in the same colour and we're going to very carefully cut it in half to make two triangles. Now be careful because scissors are sharp. There we go. These are going to be the monster's ears. Let's glue them in position, one in each corner. Very good. Now we need to get some different coloured paper. A smaller piece will do and we're going to draw two circles. Now it's easier to do this if you draw around something that's round, like this bottle of gloopy glue. These are going to be the eyes. Now let's cut them out very carefully. Stick two white stickers onto your eyes to make them really stand out. But don't worry if you haven't got stickers, you could always draw circles on white paper and cut them out. Now to make these eyes look a bit more monster-like, let's add a big black dot in the middle for pupils. Now glue the eyes onto the monster's face. Now this looks really good, but I think our monster needs some eyebrows. So let's grab our pom-pom and very carefully make a snip in the middle of it with our scissors. There we go. And now if we very gently pull it apart, we get bushy eyebrows. Now we can lay the eyebrows down on top of the picture, around the eyes, and glue them into place. We need to give our monster a mouth. So let's draw a black line like this at the bottom of the picture. We can use a ruler to help us. Then cut triangles out of some white paper and glue them along the line to make a grumpy mouth with sharp teeth. Hmm, our monster's missing something. He's missing a nose. And for that, we need a round plastic container. Now, any type will do, but this washing ball works really well. Now, ask an adult to help you find one and thoroughly clean one out. And then you need to paint it in a special gloopy mixture that's made up of half paint and half gloopy glue. Let's give it a mix. Let's get painting. When it's dry, glue the nose onto your monster. There, 
And now for a finishing touch, we can add some coloured stickers to give our monster a spotty face. Brilliant! What a funny monster face! And why not try some other monsters with different funny noses? This monster has three eyes and a nose made out of a plastic egg. Or why not try a happy monster with a big nose made out of an old plastic bowl? Fantastic funny monster faces. Why don't you try making one? <laughs> oh, I wonder who that could be. Let's have a look. <laughs> Oh, look, it's just a big monster with a funny nose. <laughs> I just wanted to say hello. Oh, all right then. Hello. Hello. Goodbye. Oh, goodbye. <laughs> <sighs> it's a funny old world, isn't it? <laughs> so, let's make a picture out of... Game counters. Woo! <laughs> Can you guess what it's going to be? It's a unicorn! Now it's time I did some washing up. Oh, it's minute make time! Come on! <laughs> it's minute make time, and here's what we're gonna make today. It's coin clackers! Olay! <laughs> now, to make coin clackers, you will need a rectangle shaped piece of cardboard, two strips of thin card, two coins that are the same size, some sticky tack and some sticky tape. Now, do you think it's possible to make this in just one minute? You'll have to go like the clackers. Yes, I will. I'll have to be quick, but don't worry. I'll remind you how to do it at the end. Are you ready? Let's make it in a minute. Start the clock. Right, let's get the piece of rectangle-shaped cardboard and fold it in half like that. Then get a strip of card and loop it around the finger. That makes one loop and we can fix that in place with a piece of sticky tape. There we go. On you go, there's one loop. I'm going to do the same with the other piece of card here. Just looping it around like that. There we go. And a bit of sticky tape there should fix it in place. Go on, on you go. Halfway there. Halfway already? Oh, no. Right, I need to make a loop of sticky tape now. And around here we go. If I put that one on there, that will fix one of the loops in. And now I need another bit now. Come on, here we are. Coach. Oh, I haven't got long. I'm running out of time. Right, here we go. If I put that on there, put that loop there. Now I need my coins. And if I stick those on, there, and there, I've done it! That was close! Yeah, just in time! A coin clacker made in a minute! <laughs> and if you've got more than a minute, you could paint your coin clacker and even do different designs. This one's got wavy patterns. And this one's got stripes, triangles and dots. How about this snapping clacker? It's painted just like a crocodile. Coin clackers! Made in a minute. Why don't you give it a go? Here's a reminder of how to do it. Let's go back to the beginning and take another look. To make a coin clacker, fold some cardboard in half. Roll two bits of card around your finger to make tubes. Tape one to the top of your clacker and one to the bottom. Put some sticky tack onto your coins and stick them to the inside of your clacker, lining them up so they hit each other. Why don't you make it in a minute? Let's see what the weather's like today. I can't wait to get outside. <laughs> oh, no! What a horrible storm. Oh, I wish I was somewhere nice and hot and sunny. I'd love to go to a magical holiday island where there was lots of ice cream, 
sunshine and fresh coconuts from the trees. Mmm, oh. <laughs> what a wonderful dream, eh? <laughs> Oh, wait a minute, though. We don't have to dream. We can make the sand, the sunshine and the magical island come to us. I've just had a great idea. Let's try something. Try making a terrific tropical picture using sand and gloopy glue. Let's make it. We'll need some things from the doodle drawers. Come on. <laughs> Some food colouring and a spoon. Some gloopy PVA glue and a pen. And some thick card. Ooh. Now we'll also need some play sand, which you can get from a toy shop, and some icing bags, which you can get from a supermarket. I'll be back in two ticks. Yeah. I've got them. Here we go. There's my icing bag. I'm going to put that there. And here's the play sand. I'm going to put that down nice and safe. Now, I've got plans for those later. But for now, take a look at this brilliant sand picture. It's amazing. And to make it, we need to separate our sand into four separate bowls that look a bit like this. Now, into each bowl, we need to put two cups of sand. One, two, and do the same in the other bowls. Now we're going to add some food colouring to each bowl. Now, you can choose whatever colours you like, but I'm going to add yellow, blue, green, and I'm also going to mix up brown by adding a bit of green and a bit of red. Now remember, the more food colouring you add, the stronger your colour will be. Now we're going to add gloopy glue to each bowl. <laughs> Now we can start mixing. You need to make sure your mixture will squeeze through an icing bag, but don't make it too runny. There. Now we're going to scoop sand from each bowl into an icing bag. Now, if you find this tricky, you might want to ask an adult to help you. Make sure you use a different bag for each colour. There we go. Now we need to draw a picture on some coloured card. Now this blue card will make a nice sky for our tropical island. <laughs> now let's colour it in. Use the yellow icing bag to colour in the island and the sun. <laughs> Gently squeeze out the mixture to fill in your picture. <laughs> Again, if you find this tricky, ask an adult to help you. Now use the brown sandy mixture to fill in the trunk and the coconuts. We can use the blue mixture to colour in the sea. <laughs> and lastly, the green sandy mixture we can use for the leaves on the palm tree. <laughs> And look! It's all done! Now all we need to do is leave it to dry overnight. Night! <laughs> <laughs> oh, morning! Hey! And when it's dry, it'll be nice and hard like this. It's a terrific tropical island made out of sand. But you don't just have to make an island. Oh, no! How about making a red and black crab on yellow sand? Or even a magical purple and pink castle on glittery grass? Fantastic! Why don't you try it? <laughs> oh no, it's still raining outside. Ow. Oh well, at least it's not raining in here. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! 
Oh no, not again! Oh, 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 oh no, it's raining coconut! Oh, ow! No, no, stop it! Oh, oh, I'm getting out of here! Oh. I've just been upstairs fixing my leaky tap. Yeah, it was no problem, thanks to my trusty tools and my brilliant fix-it skills! Hey! Oh no, it's still dripping up there! I better go and fix it again. Excuse me, it won't be long. <laughs> right, there we go. It's definitely fixed now, thanks to my trusty tools and my brilliant fix-it skills. Oh no, it's still dripping. I don't believe this, I just give up. But that dripping tap gives me a brilliant idea. Try making a stunning drip picture that's great fun to do. Let's make it! We'll need some things from the doodle drawers! Come on! Some paint. A glue stick, a pen and a pencil. Some paper, some card, and some scissors. <laughs> and some water. <sighs> Whoa! Now, to make your very own drip picture, like this one here, you first have to put some old paper or some newspaper down first, because this can get a bit messy. Now you can choose your paint. Squeeze some into some plastic beakers. And now add in a dash of water to make it slightly runny, a bit like custard. Give it a good stir. Next, take a sheet of thick paper or card and draw a thin pencil line along it like this. Make this quite near the bottom. And now we're going to pour painty mixture right along the line like this, and do an extra big dollop in the middle. Now, this is the fun bit. We're going to pick up our card at the painty end and lift it up. Are you ready? Here we go! Way! Oh, look at it go! It's a fantastic drippy pattern. Whoa, I'm just going to stop there before it reaches the end of the card because I don't want to get paint all over my table. Whilst that's drying, draw two eyes and a mouth on some white paper. And then cut these out, but be careful because scissors are sharp. Oh, all right, all right. And when the paint is dry, glue on the eyes and the mouth. There he is, a drip monster. Isn't he funny? Let's do another one. This time, draw two curvy lines at the bottom of the card. Like this. And this. There, they look like smiles. Now let's pour on some paint. This one can be purple, and this one can be green. Now, if we pick up our card, away we go! Oh, come on, here we go! There! Brilliant! And now let's leave these to dry too. And when it's dry, add paper eyes and mouths, just like we did before. And there! They look like two little aliens, don't they? And there are other ideas you could try too. The weed in this fish picture was made by pouring a line of paint along the bottom of the card, then letting it run. After it's dry, just draw a fish and some pebbles and cut them out. So why don't you try letting your paint run and make a drippy picture? Oh no, that tap's dripping upstairs again. Hmm, maybe there's a problem with the pipes. Uh-oh! <laughs> oh, yeah. There's definitely a problem with the pipes. But don't worry, I'll fix them later. But not before I fix my hair. <sighs> there, that's better. 
Oh, it's minute make time. Come on, everyone. Whoa. Have you ever wanted to make your friends laugh? Well, here's a good idea. Oh, silly springy eyes. You can buy them in a shop or you can make your own. Now, to make these springy eyes, you will need four strips of coloured card, two circles of card, a pair of old sunglasses, hi there, a glue stick, some white stickers, a black pen and some sticky tape. Now, do you think it's possible to make this in just one minute? You're having a laugh. Well, let's find out. I'm going to have to be very quick, but don't worry. I'll remind you how to do it at the end. Are you ready? Let's make it in a minute. Start the clock. Right, I'm going to make a paper spring now by folding over one way with a strip and then the other way and then one way and then the other way and then one way and then the other way. Like this, over and over. There's one spring. Brilliant. And now I need to make another one. There we go. Let's spring into action. There we go. Over there. Oh, I've got to be Basta. quick as I can. There we go. Right, another spring. Now I need to get some glue and put some on the end there and some on the end there and then put on my circles. Halfway there. Halfway already? Oh, no. Right, now, where are my circles? There they are. There's one and there's two. Now, these are going to be the eyes. So I need to get a black pen and put a circle in the middle. There we are. There's a pupil there. And there's one. Ooh, brilliant. Right, I need to get a loop of sticky tape like this and put them on the glasses. There's one loop. Now I need another one. Ten seconds. Oh, no, I'm running out of time. There's that one there. There's one eye. And there's the other one. I've done it. Only just. And if you've got more than a minute, you can make some other silly springy eyes. Ooh, very funny. It looks like I've got robot eyes. Ooh, or how about dizzy eye glasses? The sillier the better. Silly springy glasses. Why don't you make them in a minute? Here's a reminder of how to do it. Let's go back to the beginning and take another look. Take four coloured strips of paper and fold them together like this to make two paper springs. Glue on two coloured circles and then put stickers with dots on for eyes. And then stick your springs onto your glasses to finish your silly springy eyes. Why don't you try and make it in a minute? Oh, it's minute make time. Come on, everyone. It's minute make time. And here's what we're going to make today. A cotton bud sheep. Look at him. He's fantastic. Now, to make a cotton bud sheep, you will need some cotton buds, some scissors, a sharp pencil and some air drying clay that you can get from an art and craft shop. I'll be back in a tick. <laughs> I've got them. There's my air drying clay. Now, do you think it's possible to make this in just one minute? No way! Well, I think I can. Let's find out. I'm going to have to be very quick, but don't worry. I'll remind you how to do it at the end. Are you ready? Let's make it in a minute. Start the clock. Right, let's get two lumps of air drying clay like this and then roll them into balls. One's big and one's small. That's good. OK, now we need two cotton buds and very carefully I'm going to cut them in half. There we go. There we go. Right, and with the other two, I'm just going to cut off the fluffy ends. There they go. And then the other two, we'll be very careful. There we go. Brilliant. Right, and I've also got a little bit left over there in the middle. Now, if I get that big piece of air drying clay and push the half buds in, these are going to be the legs. Halfway! Halfway already? Oh, no. There we go. Right, that should stand up. Brilliant. There's the body. Oh, come on, stand up, Mr Sheep. There we go. And then with this bit, I'm going to push it in there because that's going to be the neck. Now, if I push the smaller ball on, there's his head. Right, now let's give him on, an ear couch. here. There we go. And an ear on that side. And then give him a little tail. There we go, like that. And now with a sharp pencil, I just need to give him a face. There we go. I've done it. 
Lucky, lucky, lucky! <laughs> Phew, just made it! And when it's hard and dry, and you've got more than a minute, you can paint it like our little sheep here. And how about trying some other animals? You could try making a pink pig with a cotton bud snout. Or how about a chicken with a cotton bud beak? <laughs> cotton bud creatures made in a minute. Why don't you try it? Here's a reminder of how to do it. Let's go back to the beginning and take another look. Roll a small and a large ball of clay. Cut two cotton buds in half. And with two more, just cut off the fluffy ends, leaving the middle piece behind. Push four buds into the large ball for feet. Use the middle piece as a neck and stick the head on it. Add two cotton buds for ears, one for a tail, and give it a face with a pencil. To finish your cotton bud creature. Why don't you try making it in a minute? Let's make a picture out of... Whistles! Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Can you guess what it is? It's a football! Look what I found in the doodle drawers today! Bandages! People use them when they've hurt themselves. Oh, hey! But luckily, I'm feeling fine. Oh, that's better. I'd much rather use bandages to make a fantastic piece of art. But the question is, what shall I make? Hmm. 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 Bandages. Hey? Eh? Bandages. Bandages. A mummy. Of course! <laughs> Egypt! Aha! That's it! I've got a great idea! Let's try something! Try making an amazing ancient Egyptian picture out of bandages! Let's make it! As well as some bandages, we'll need some other things from the doodle drawers! Come on, you lot! Some gloopy PVA glue some coloured crayons, a fiery dragon, no, we don't need him, some coffee powder, and a sheet of white paper. Wow! Now, to make an ancient Egyptian picture, like this one here, you have to start with half a teaspoon of coffee powder. That's right, I said coffee powder. So we need to put it into a cup. And then mix it in with two splashes of water. Now give it a good stir. And now we can put in a big splodge of gloopy glue. And now let's give this a good stir. Now, the next bit is the fun bit, but it's also the messy bit. So make sure you put down some old paper or newspaper first. Now, we're going to bring in our paper, and then we need to cut some bandages into strips and lay them across the paper. Now, we're going to very carefully paint our glue and coffee mixture all over the bandages. And when it's dry, all of the bandages will be stuck together. And it's gone a lovely light brown colour. Let's start drawing our picture with a black wax crayon. Start with a palm tree. A nice trunk bending over with palm leaves on top. Now make sure you do all the outlines in black. Put some triangles for pyramids up here. And let's not forget the sun in the sky. Let's add some grass around the tree. There! And when you're happy with your picture, you can start colouring it in. Wax crayons look really good on this rough sort of paper. 
It's an ancient Egyptian picture from many, many years ago. You can try some other ideas too. You can make other pictures look really old, like this castle picture. Or you could try your very own old looking treasure map. So why don't you try making some old looking paper and drawing an ancient picture that's very realistic. Whoa, where am I? I didn't mean this realistic. Whoa. <laughs> Right, here's what we're going to make today. It's a pebble dog. Yes, man's best friend made out of pebbles. Now, to make a pebble dog, you need two pebbles, a big one and a small one. You'll also need some glue, a pen and some white stickers. Now, don't worry, if you haven't got these stickers, you could draw circles on white paper and cut them out. You'll also need a rectangle shaped piece of brown paper and some scissors. Now, do you think it's possible to make a pebble dog in just a minute? No way! Really? Let's find out. I'm going to have to be very quick, but don't worry, I'll remind you how to do it at the end. Are you ready? Start the car! Let's go! Let's first get our piece of brown paper, fold it in half, and then very carefully with our scissors, let's cut out an ear shape like this. There we go, round and round. There, be careful. And when that's done, you can open it up. Let's get our big pebble and put some glue on the back. There we go, like that. And then you can stick that down to the ears. Ah, he's taking shape now. Let's give him some eyes. Gonna use the white stickers for these. There's one eye. And there's two eyes. Let's add some dots for the eyes. There's one and there's two. I need some more glue now on our small pebble. There. There we go. That's on and I can just finish him off with my pen. Whoop, whoop, boop, 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 boop. A pebble dog! Time! Just made it! Phew! When it's dry and you've got more than a minute, you could paint his nose. Look, he looks great. And there are so many different shapes and sizes you can try, like this. This dog's grey with a brown nose. This one's got a black ring around its eye. And this dog's got big floppy ears. A pebble dog made in a minute. Why don't you try it? Here's a reminder of how to do it. Let's go back to the beginning and take another look. Fold a piece of paper in half. Cut out an ear shape. Then glue the pebble to the middle of the unfolded ears. Stick on white stickers for eyes. And add two black dots in the middle. Stick on a pebble for the nose. And draw a mouth on your pebble dog. Try making it in a minute. I'm just looking through my seaside box. It's full of all the things I take with me when I go on holiday. Let's have a look. Uh, yes, here's my bucket and spade. Very nice. What else have we got? Oh, brilliant. Look, my mask and snorkel. <laughs> and of course, not forgetting my beach ball. Brilliant. Oh, look, there's also Lots of shells in here too. Now I found this one when I went diving under the sea. I said I love swimming under the sea. Yeah, and it's given me a great idea. Let's make something. A super shimmering shell grotto that looks like it's on the bottom of the sea. Let's make it. We'll need some things from the doodle drawers. <laughs> some shells. Some paint. 
paper plate. <laughs> some gloopy PVA glue. And some glitter and a black pen. <sighs> Plus, we'll also need some air drying clay that you can get from an art and craft shop. I'll be back in a tick. <laughs> Right, I'll put our air drying clay there for now. Now, to make your very own shell grotto, like this one here, you need to push some air drying clay onto a paper plate like this. Now we're ready to bring in our shells. Now, there are all sorts of different types, but it's a good idea to use a good mixture of shapes and sizes. Now, let's start placing them into the clay. Let's start with the biggest shell, and we can push it into the clay at the back like this. You can arrange the other shells however you like, and then leave the clay to dry. When the clay's dry, like this, you can paint your shell grotto a nice underwater colour, like a purple, a green, or maybe even a blue. Now, to do that, we need to make a painty mixture that's half paint and half gloopy glue. There we go, let's give it a mix. There. Now we can paint this painty mixture over a shell grotto. And how about adding a few highlights with a shiny colour? Now, silver paint will work really well for this. So let's bring in some silver painty mixture and paint some on. There. And now, whilst the paint's still wet, let's sprinkle some colourful glitter all over a shell grotto. Now, the glitter will stick because the paint is still wet and it will make the grotto really sparkle. Now, it's a good idea to do this on some old paper, some newspaper or a tray, as this can get a bit messy. <laughs> then shake off all the extra glitter for this amazing effect. There. Now, for the windows, we can use a black pen to draw squares on our shells, and then we can paint them yellow in the middle. You can do as many windows as you want. Just draw little black squares, and then paint them yellow. What a brilliant effect! A fantastic shimmering shell grotto and you can try any design you like. This one's covered in green paint and green glitter. Or how about using a bigger shell and adding some more shell buildings like this? Let's go! Ooh. It's time to go! Let's make a picture out of... Game pieces. Whoa! <laughs> hey! Oh! <laughs> what are they going to make? Can you guess what it is? It's a corn on the cob. And what's this? Ooh, it's Minute Make Time. Come on. It's Minute Make Time. And here's what we're going to make today. Look at this. It's a hilarious hairband. A joke arrow through the head. It'll really make your friends laugh. Now, to make one of these, you will need two thin strips of brown card, some grey card, some red card, a hairband, some scissors, a pen, some glue and some sticky tape. Now, do you think it's possible to make this in just one minute? 
Not a chance. Well, let's find out. I'm going to have to move very quickly, but don't worry. I'll remind you how to do it at the end. Are you ready? Let's make it in a minute. Start the clock. Right, let's get the red card and draw two sloping rectangles that face each other like that. This is going to be the back of our arrow. Now I'm going to have to cut this out. Be careful. Don't worry, Toki, I will. All right, there we go. And like that. And like that. There we go. <laughs> and now I need to cut out something from the grey. That's a triangle shape. Faster! Faster! I'm going as quick as I can. There we go. Now I need some glue and these strips here. All right, come on, glue. There we are. There's some glue there. And then some glue on this side there. There we go. Right, now I need some tape and the hairband. Right, let's put that bit there and then just fit it around here if we can. There we go. Oh, I'm nearly done. I'm nearly done. Now we need this bit here, around here like that. I did it. Only just. Oh, phew. Hilarious hairbands made in a minute. And if you've got more than a minute, you could try different designs. Ooh. Oh, look at my beautiful hair bunches and pink bows. Ooh. Or how about cow horns and cow ears? Very moving. <laughs> Hilarious hairbands made in a minute. Why don't you try it? Oh, here's a reminder of how to do it. Let's go back to the beginning and take another look. Draw two sloping rectangle shapes facing each other on the red card. Draw a triangle on the grey card and cut everything out. Glue them to your thin brown strips of card and then tape the brown strips to the headband. Then your funny headband is complete. Why don't you try making it in a minute? It, it, oh, no. Oh, it's a bit of a disaster here. I wanted to paint a picture, but I can't find any of my paintbrushes. I was trying to use this little cotton bud, but it's just too small. It would be fine if it was a bit bigger. Hmm. hmm. I could paint big pictures with a big cotton bud. I could practice my canoeing. I could even use it to get fit. And strong! <laughs> hmm. But they're not really big, they're small and not much use to me at all. Hmm, apart from. Wait for it, wait for it! They've given me an idea! What about this? Let's create a crazy cotton bud creature. Let's make it! We'll need some things from the doodle drawers! <laughs> Some paint, some wool, some cotton buds, oh, and we'll also need some air drying clay, which you can get from any arty and crafty shop. I'll be back in a minute. I've got it. Now this is our air drying clay and it makes the bodies of our crazy cotton bud creatures like this. Now take a long piece of wool and tie it into a loop. Now this is a bit fiddly so you might want to ask an adult to help you with this bit. There. Now get your lump of clay and roll it into a ball around your wool. There. Now take some scissors and a cotton bud and very carefully snip one of the ends off. Like that. There. Now let's push this into the clay. There. Let's do another one. There we go. And push this in as well. There's two. Now keep going until your clay is covered in cotton buds and then leave it to dry. When it's dry, your creature needs eyes. Now for this, we roll two small balls of air drying clay, like that. And then with a pencil, or the end of one of our cut off cotton buds, 
we make two dots. One there, and one there, like that. Those are the dots for the eyes, and then we stick them on. There's one, and there's two. Now we're ready to paint. There, he's all painted. And look, you can even paint white for the eyes and put a little black dot in the middle. Now you can hang him up using your loop of wool like this. Great! Oh, look, you look funny. You look pretty funny yourself. Oh, charming. You can make all sorts of different colours and types of creature. How about a purple one with green spots? Or a rainbow coloured one? Or a glittery one? Try making crazy creatures out of small cotton buds. Much better than big cotton buds. Oh. Oh. Here's a great idea using a cuddly toy. It's really simple to make and looks so good you'll be able to frame it. You'll need coloured paper, a wax crayon, and a cuddly toy like this bear. First of all, lay your bear on top of the paper. Now take a wax crayon and carefully draw around the outside of the bear. Look, by drawing around the body of the bear, you get a perfect bear shape. Finished. Well, not quite. This bear is a bit lonely. Let's draw him some friends on a different coloured paper. Now for the really fun bit. Tear all of the bear shapes out. The great thing about tearing is that you don't have to be too careful. Try and stay on the drawn line, but it doesn't matter if you go a bit over. Now stick your bears onto a different coloured paper to show off their colours and shapes. What a fantastic toy picture! And you can draw around any toy you want. Why don't you try it? What a great way of making a really clever picture. Now all that's left to do is... Frame it! I love making pictures out of all sorts of things. Oh dear. Oh, I've got a bit of a cold coming on. A tissue! Oh, a tissue! Oh, no, it's gone. A tissue! Oh, dear. Oh, a tissue? Hmm, this gives me an idea. A fantastically fluffy bird made from terrific tissue paper. Let's make it. We'll need some things from the doodle drawers. A paper plate. Some kitchen roll. A large marrow. Oh no, that's for my lunch. Piece of card. Some white sticky PVA glue in a bowl. Oh, and lots of. Uh, lots of. Uh, 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 oh, tissue paper. Oh. Whoa! Now, to make your tissue paper bird, like this one here, isn't he great? We first need to make the eyes, and for that, we need two sheets of kitchen roll. One, two. Now, let's scrunch the kitchen roll up into a ball and dip it into our glue. Oh, it's gloopy. That's it, scrunch it up and then stick it onto one side of the plate, like that. Let's do it with the other sheet. Scrunch it up into a ball, dip it into the glue and then stick it on the other side of the plate. There we go. There, look, eyes. Now it's time to make the beak. So I'm just gonna give my hands a quick wipe. There, getting rid of all that glue. 
because now we need to do some drawing on our card. Now you can use cereal box card or some other strong card and you need to draw a diamond shape like this. There. Now let's cut this out, but be careful because scissors are sharp. Now to make a beak like this, fold your diamond shape in half like that and then glue it onto the plate. Plenty of glue on there, onto the back. And now I'm gonna push down quite hard so it sticks in place. There, perfect. Now let's tear up strips of tissue paper into nice, long, thin strips. <laughs> now glue your tissue paper strips all over the plate, making sure that they stick over the edge. There's one, and there's two. But make sure you don't cover up his eyes. Now add another colour to the beak. Orange works well for this. When you finish the outside of your beak, you can start putting some colour inside it. Let's use red for this. And when you're finished, it will look like this. Great! And now you can stick different coloured strips around the outside of the plate. All done! Now we can add some extra details with a pen. There we go, Mr. Bird! Perfect! He wants me to show you other paper plate ideas you can make, like these. Oh, a lion? A snow monster! What the abominable noise! Oh, but I tell you what, I think it's cured my cold. My sneezes are gone! Oh, 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 oh maybe not. Oh, oh, great! It's Minute Maid time! Here's what we're going to make today. A crazy peg bug. So, I better make it snappy. And to make one of these, you will need a pair of scissors, a wooden peg, four pipe cleaners, some felt tip pens, some white stickers, and that's it. But do you think you can make this in just one minute? No way. Well, let's find out. I'm gonna have to be very quick, but don't worry, I'll remind you how to do it at the end. Start the clock. Let's go! Get the peg and your felt tip pens and start colouring in stripes. Now you can use whatever colours you like, but I'm going to use black and orange. There we go, there's the black done. Let's do the orange. There we go. Do the other side as well. There. That's looking very good. Now let's get three of the pipe cleaners and if we hold them together and just feed them in like this, we can bend them into shape to make legs. Halfway! There. there are all the legs bent into shape. Now let's get the other pipe cleaner and we'll wind it around this end to make the antennae. There we go, fantastic. And now we just need to add some eyes 
with these white stickers. There we go, there's one white sticker. And there's the other one, and we can add black dots on as well. I did it! Only just! And if you've got more than a minute, you can make all sorts of crazy peg bugs. How about a purple and yellow one with purple pipe cleaners for legs? Or a black and gold stripy peg bug with black pipe cleaner legs? Crazy peg bugs made in a minute. Why don't you try and make one? Here's a reminder of how to do it. <laughs> Let's go back to the beginning and take another look. Add stripes to the peg with felt tip pens. Put the pipe cleaners into the peg to make legs. Twist a pipe cleaner at the front to make antennae. Add white stickers for eyes. And draw a face with a black pen to finish off your crazy peg bug. Why don't you try and make it in a minute? <laughs> Let's make a picture out of pegs. What are they going to make? Wow, they're balloons! This is a fabulous picture of a shiny fish. And it looks so good, you will be able to frame it. You will need some paper, some shiny wrappers or bits of foil, scissors, glue, a silver pen and a dark blue felt tip pen. Start off by drawing a fish shape with the felt tip. Its body is a circle with three fins. Now colour in the fins with the felt tip pen. Draw an eye shape and a big curvy smile. And you've got a happy fish. Let's give him some scales. Get your old shiny wrappers and bits of foil and carefully cut out the scales in the shape of your thumb or an upside down U like this. Cut lots of scale shapes out of all the different types of foil and wrappers. Now glue all of the scales down. Start at the back of the fish and work your way up towards his eye and mouth. Make sure you overlap the scales like this. Then add a few extra details with a silver pen to finish it off. It's a fabulous shiny fish! What a great way of making a really clever picture! Now all that's left to do is... Frame it! I love making pictures out of all sorts of things. So, ooh, it's minute make time. Here's what we're going to make today. A super sock creature. To make a sock creature, you will need a long, colourful sock, a pair of scissors, a black pen, some white stickers, and an old empty plastic bottle. Now you might want to get an adult to help you find one of these and clean it out. Now, do you think it's possible to make this in just one minute? No way! Put a sock in it, Toki. <laughs> I'm just kidding, you can cheer me on. And you can cheer me on too. I'm gonna have to be very quick, but don't worry, I'll remind you how to do it at the end. Are you ready? Let's make it in a minute. Start the sock. Yes, <laughs> very funny. Right, let's get our bottle and then our long sock and start rolling it up. There we go, up it goes as quick as we can. Now, when it's all rolled up, we're going to feed it very carefully onto the bottle like that. There we go. Brill, there it is. Great. There we go. Now, if we pull the toe out, we can make snips very carefully. In the end, there's one. There's two. Now, these are going to be the hair. Halfway! There's another bit there. Another snip. Fantastic. And now I'm going to tie these two end ones like this. Round and round they go. Brilliant. That makes the hair and that heel bit makes his mouth. Now, if I get two white stickers and draw dots on them, these are going to be the eyes. 
Let's stick them on. There's one eye, and there's the other eye. There, I've done it! Only just! And if you've got more than a minute, you can try different coloured sock creatures with different socks. Look at this one here. It's got different coloured stripes. Or you could use a small sock and a small bottle to make a little sock creature. Sock creatures made in a minute. Why don't you try making one? Here's a reminder of how to do it. Let's go back to the beginning and take another look. Slide a sock over a bottle. Cut the top of the sock into strips and then tie them together. Give it eyes using white stickers with black dots on and your crazy sock creature is finished. Why don't you try making it in a minute? Oh, oh what terrible weather. Oh, hello. Nice to see you again. Oh, it's awful out there. Oh, no. I forgot to wipe my feet. Oh, what a mess. There are leaves everywhere. But I tell you what, though, they've given me a great idea. Let's try something. Try branching out with a brilliant leaf print picture. Let's make it, as well as leaves, we'll need some other things from the doodle drawers. Come on. Some paper. Some paint. and some paintbrushes and a glue stick. Whoa! Now, to make a leaf print picture, like this one here, take your green paper and start to paint a hedgehog's head. Paint a grey triangle, because this makes a great snout shape. Look, I've added some black fork shapes for the hedgehog's feet and blended in some brown paint to his snout. Now it's time for the fun bit. Let's put down some old paper or newspaper as this can get a bit messy. Now we're going to take a leaf and turn it upside down so it's got the bumpy side facing up. And then we're going to paint some brown paint on top of it. Now, if we get some white paper and pick up our leaf very carefully and place it paint side down, you can push very gently on top of it. And when we pick it up, we get a leaf print. Wow, look at that! Now carry on doing this until you've covered your paper in prints. Then, when the prints are dry, cut each leaf out. But be careful, because scissors are sharp. <laughs> now we can give our hedgehog a body. We're going to stick the leaf prints down with glue, but make sure all the leaves are pointing outwards to look like the hedgehog's spikes. Let's do it. Finally, finish off with some black paint and give your hedgehog two eyes and a nose. It's Harry the Hedgehog, printed with the leaves he loves to play in. <laughs> Keep it down, will you? I've only just woken up. Oh, sorry, Harry. You can choose different types of leaves and try some other ideas too. How about a stag? It's made by painting a stag's body and printing antlers with curvy leaves. Or even a lion, which is made by painting a lion's face and printing its mane with spiky leaves. <laughs> oh, they look great, don't they? 
And this is really easy to do. You can change photographs of yourself or someone else into a character, and it's so good that you will be able to frame it. You'll need some foil, some felt, some glue, two different colours of glitter, and you'll also need to get a photograph like this and decide what character you would like it to be. This handsome fellow should be a knight in shining armour. Every good knight needs a helmet and some armour, which you can make out of tin foil. Shape the foil to make it look like a helmet, and you can make the rest of your armour in the same way. This is a breastplate, and some leg guards. And how about a sword and a shield? You can cut them out of felt. Then glue it all down. There, that's how to turn yourself into a knight in shining armour. Let's try something else. This is a picture of Melinda Maker, my little sister. Let's turn her into a princess. What does every good princess need? No, not glue. Let's add some glitter. You've guessed it. Yes, it's going to be a tiara. And how about a long flowing dress? Paint the dress using glue and sprinkle a different colour glitter all over the top. Then leave it to dry. When it's dry, shake off the glitter. There you go. Isn't she beautiful? Those good looks just run in the family. Turn a photo of yourself or someone else into a character. It's really fun and it looks brilliant. What a great way of making a really clever picture. Now all that's left to do is... Frame it. Very impressive. Now take a look at this. You. I have been learning how to knit. Yeah. Take a look at my new jumper. Ah. Oh. Well, it is a little bit big, I suppose, but that doesn't matter, because I need some wool for something we're going to make today. Now, if I just unpick a little tiny bit from here, like this... Perfect! And now that we've got our wool, we can try something! Try making a picture of a tree using wool. That looks great! Right, jumper off. Jack it on! Let's make it! As well as some wool, we'll need some things from the doodle drawer. Some pieces of coloured paper. A glue stick. And some paint. Whoa. Now, to make your wool picture, like this one here, take your piece of paper and fold it in half, like this. And then open it out again. Now for the really fun, really messy part. Take a piece of wool and dip it completely in green paint. Yuck, this is really gooey. Okay, and now pick up the painty wool and twist and twirl it all over one half of your paper, like that. And then fold it over again. Here we go. And push down hard, like that. And then carefully remove the wool. And it comes. There. And now, if we open it up again. There! Very nice, eh? Do the same again with a lighter colour. Looking good. Now do the same again with yellow paint. Hey, what a great pattern. Now I'm going to make it into the tree. But first, I'm going to wipe my hands. Now, take a rectangle of brown paper. 
And if you haven't got brown paper and you've only got white, you could paint it brown. Fold it in half, like that, and then get some scissors. Now, be careful because scissors are sharp. OK, now cut a curve on the open side. Like that, and then get some glue and stick it down underneath your woolly print. There, it's a wonderful woolly tree. You can try loads of other ideas using wool. Once you've tried a tree, why not do a woolly monster's mad hair? Use any colour of paint you like. Or even a running tap. Doesn't it look effective? So why don't you try making some amazing woolly pictures? And remember, you can just get some wool by pulling any old jumper apart. <laughs> what? Oh, I see. You're quite right. You should never pull a jumper apart unless you've got permission from an adult. Or permission from a jumper. Yeah. <laughs> what? Oh, all right. I'd, uh, yeah, I'd love to dance. <laughs> Great dancing. Thanks. Oh, it's very dusty. <laughs> oh, oh, no! My marbles! Oh! Hmm, this gives me an idea. Try using marbles to make a brilliant cobweb, complete with its own spider. Let's make it! You'll need a marble and some things from the doodle drawers. <laughs> a tray. Some coloured paper. Some bagpipes. Now, I don't think we want them. And some white paint. Ooh. Now, to make your cobweb like this one here, first take your tray and put your coloured paper in the middle. Now, dark colours work best for this. Then get your poster paint and squidge a circle right in the middle, like that. You can do that straight from the bottle. Now this is the fun bit. Get your marble, put it in the middle of the paint and start rolling. It's a great cobweb effect, isn't it? Now, we'll leave this to dry and start drawing our spider. OK, let's start with the body. Yeah. Draw a spiky circle shape and add eight legs. Now for the spider's eyes and fangs. Now cut out all of your spider bits, but be careful because scissors are sharp. Ooh. Glue your eyes and fangs onto your spider. Look, it's a big hairy spider. Now, let's stick him on our cobweb. Go. ta -da! Your very own cobweb, complete with a paper spider. Yeah. Oh, I'm glad he's only made out of paper. Stick me down with glue, would you? I'm going to get you. Oh, oh, oh. Now, take a look at this. This is a wonderful washing line picture. It's great fun to make and looks so good, you'll be able to frame it. You will need coloured paper, lolly sticks, string, scissors, glue, 
a pencil, mini pegs, and pictures from an old magazine. Draw a hill on some green paper with a pencil. Then carefully cut it out and glue it to the bottom of a piece of blue paper. Cut out a house shape with different coloured windows and doors from coloured paper. You could even cut out an orange circle for the sun. Then stick all these pieces down. Next, cut a piece of string and lay it across the middle of the paper. Place a lolly stick at each end and glue it all down. This is our washing line. Let's hang up the washing with mini pegs, which you can get from an art and craft shop. If you haven't got any, cut small pieces of cardboard to use instead. Stick the pegs along the string like this. Next, carefully cut out pictures of clothes from an old magazine or catalogue. And peg your washing on the line for a fantastic effect. What a brilliant picture! Why don't you have a go? And then... Frame it! Isn't that lovely? Oh no, my washing! Well, never mind. Let's make a picture out of nuts and bolts! Whoa! Wow! It's a spider! It's not rubbish! This is! Oh, hello there! I was just finishing my clay model. What do you think? Hey, look at him! He's a handsome chap, isn't he? Yeah! Now, oh, where shall I put him? Uh, over there, I think, yeah. Up on the shelves. Uh, if there's room, then... Uh, no, maybe not. Uh, oh, over here! Yeah, in the drawers! Uh, no, I don't think I'll get it in the drawers. Um, oh, maybe over there. shape has got stuck in my face. Oh, Ooh. it gives me an idea though. Try pressing toys into clay to make a picture you can hang on the wall. Let's make it. The main things you need are in the doodle drawers. Come on. A small box lid or food tray. Some old toys. some paint and some special air drying clay that you can buy from an arts and craft shop. I'll be back in a tick. <laughs> Woo. Now to make a clay pitcher like this one here, firstly roll or press your clay flat into your lid or tray. Now, choose a toy and press it into the clay. Look! The toy has left a print in the clay. Now, build up the rest of your picture using other different shape toys. Then push a hole in the top with a pencil and leave it to dry. When it's nice and dry, carefully take it out of your lid or tray. And now you can paint it. Do this by picking out the parts where the toys have been pushed in. I'm going to do some white on my cow. Now, how about some green for the grass in the background? And 
why not paint a blue sky and a yellow sun like this? All done, a beautiful clay picture. Now it's time to hang it up using the hole that you made. You can make lots of different types of these using different things to press into your clay. Patterns look great. This one was made using a peg, a pencil and a glue spreader. If you want, you can make a football by pressing in a toy shape like this. It looks just like the real thing. Oh, oh it's a goal! It's a beautiful day, the sun is shining, the birds are singing and my flowers... Oh no! My flowers! They're all droopy! Now, I know what they need. A nice cool drink of water. Let's give them a spray. <laughs> there! Much better. And this has given me a great idea. Let's try something. Try spray painting to make a fantastic picture. Let's make it. We'll need some things from the doodle drawers. Some paint. A piece of card. And finally, some water. Oh, there we go. Now we also need some plastic plant sprayers and you can get those from a garden centre. I'll be back in a tick. I've got them. Now this can get a bit messy, so it's a good idea to do it outside and put on some old clothes or an apron. Perfect. So to make a spray paint picture that's as brilliant as this one here, take the tops off both of the sprayers and then fill them with a special watery painty mixture that's made up of half paint and half water. Now you can use whatever colours you like, but I think that green and red will look rather good. Then put the lids back on nice and tight. And then give them a shake. <laughs> now lastly, we need to put some old paper down. Put a nice new sheet of card on top. Now we're ready to start spraying. Oh, what a great effect. Let's do another colour. Oh, doesn't that look great? Now let's do a really big one with as many colours and sprayers as you want. This is great fun to do on your own or with a friend. <laughs> Hello, Mr Maker. Hello, Mr Maker. <laughs> Are you ready to get spraying? I sure am. <laughs> Spray away. <laughs> Painting is brilliant! <laughs> Bye, Mr. Maker! Bye, Mr. Maker! Bye! <laughs> oh, I better get myself changed. Oh, oh well, that was fun. <laughs> now, take a look at this. What a fantastic bonfire picture! It looks so good, you'll be able to frame it. You'll need some black paper, paint, PVA glue and a paintbrush, glitter, sticky stars and some twigs. 
To make your bonfire pitcher, start with fire-coloured paint like red, yellow and orange in squeezy bottles. Squeeze the paint straight onto the paper in nice wavy lines. Next you can add your orange and red. To make your paint look even more like flames, use the end of a paintbrush and weave a wobbly line through it, like this. And leave it to dry. Then squeeze the PVA glue to make wavy lines on top of the flames. Add a blob at the base. And now for the fun bit, add some glitter. Gold at the base of the bonfire and red and silver around the flames. Shake off all the glitter that hasn't stuck to the glue and make sure that you clean up after yourself. Then add your twigs. Make a small pile at the bottom like this. And drizzle some gloopy glue over the top. Now all that's left to do is stick on some stars around your bonfire for the sparks. What a brilliant bonfire picture. You can almost feel the heat with this fantastic 3D effect. Why don't you have a go? What a great way of making a really clever picture. Now all that's left to do is frame it. That looks amazing. <laughs> I like to have a few nice photographs around the place to brighten things up. Take a look. But the only problem is I'm taking so many photos at the moment, I'm running out of frames to put them in. Well, not to worry, I can make one. Now, I need a frame that's more me. <gasps> Wait a minute, that's it. Me. I've just had a great idea. Let's make something. Let's make a brilliant body shaped photo frame. This one looks like me. Let's make it. We'll need some things from the doodle drawers. Are you coming? <coughs> some paint. A photograph of your face. A clear plastic lid. A pen and a glue stick. Whoa! Now we'll also need some air drying clay, which you can get from an art and craft shop. I'll be back in a tick. I've got it! Here it is. The air drying clay. Now to make a photo frame like this, take a blob of air drying clay and squash it into a body shape. Now roll a long thin sausage. Now this is going to be an arm. There's one arm. Let's do another one. That's also going to be an arm. Now we need some legs and for that we need to roll two sausage shapes, but this time they can be a bit shorter than the arms and a little bit fatter. There, two arms, two legs and a body. Let's start building it up now. Let's move the arms off to the side just for now. And we're going to sit our body up and put our legs underneath. And let's squidge the body on top. There it goes. Squidge. Now we can just gently squeeze the end of each leg to make shoes. Now for the arms. Stick one on both sides and at the end of each arm, bend it up and back on itself to make a hand that rests on the tabletop. Next it's time to pick up our little body very carefully and sit it on the edge of a shelf or table like this. Now find a photograph of someone that you'd like to put in the frame. That's me that is. Hmm. Now we're going to put this photo down and then bring in a round clear plastic lid and place it over the top of the photograph. That's about right. And then draw around it with a black pen. There we go. That gives us a nice circle, which we're going to cut out. But be careful, because scissors are sharp. <laughs> now, very carefully, put glue all the way around the edge of your picture. Like that. A 
and then bring in your lid again and stick your pitcher inside. There we go. Now we can push the photo into the top of the soft clay like this. And it looks fantastic. Now we need to leave it to dry overnight. Good night. <laughs> Morning. <laughs> when it's dry, you can paint it. Now you can choose whatever colors you like, but I think I'm going to paint this one like me. When the paint is nice and dry, you can add some extra details with a black pen. This will make everything really stand out. <laughs> wow, look at that. A photo of me in a photo frame of me. Don't I look great? <laughs> and there are lots of other photo frames that you could try too. How about turning yourself into a footballer? and painting the kit in your favourite team's colours. Or why not try an animal frame with an animal-shaped body and some ears? Or even better, why not put yourself in the frame? Let's take a photo of you. Come on, smile. That's it, say cheese. Now, take a look at this. What a brilliant picture! Why don't you have a go? And then... Frame it! Oh, I nearly dropped it then. Have a look at this. It's my ginormous jelly mountain. I just got it from my local jelly superstore. Now, if I put it down here, it'll be nice and safe. <laughs> oh. oh, there was the odd wobble on the way home, but look. I haven't dropped a jot of jelly. <laughs> and I tell you what, my jelly mountain has given me a wonderful wobbly idea. Let's try something. Try making your very own wonderful wobbly picture. Let's make it. We'll need some things from the doodle drawers. <laughs> a plastic plant pot. <laughs> Some pipe cleaners. Some coloured card. A felt tip pen and some scissors. And some sticky tape. <laughs> oh. You'll also need some air drying clay, which you can get from an art and craft shop. I'll be back in a tick. <coughs> I've got it. <laughs> There's my air drying clay. I'll put it there for later. Now to make a wonderful wobbly picture like this one here. <laughs> Get a piece of coloured paper and draw whatever you want to wobble in your picture. But this is going to be a bird flying in the clouds. You first draw a bird shape. <laughs> 
There we go, a lovely bird shape. Now, how about we get some white paper and draw two fluffy cloud shapes? Now, it's a good idea if one of the cloud shapes is smaller than the other. And lastly, let's get some yellow paper, because we're going to draw a yellow sun. And for that, we need to draw a circle. Now, here's a good tip. If you want to draw a circle, draw around something that's round. And when you've drawn all of your shapes, cut them out. But be careful, scissors are sharp. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> Next, get some pipe cleaners that match the colours of your shapes. So that will be a grey pipe cleaner for the bird, two white pipe cleaners for our fluffy clouds, and a yellow pipe cleaner for our sun. Let's turn over our shapes now and then stick on our pipe cleaners to the back with sticky tape. Next, wedge a ball of air-drying clay. Here we go. Into a plastic plant pot. There you go, this small one will work. And let's put it in. And you have to push down and squeeze quite firmly. <laughs> right, that's in there OK. Now it's time for the fun part. We're going to make a wobbly picture. You can arrange your pieces however you like, but how about we put the bird flying in front of the clouds with the sun in the background? Now, to do that, let's get our big cloud first, and we're going to push it into the back of the clay here. Now, let's get our sun, and we can push that just in front of the big cloud. Now, it's a good idea as you arrange your different pieces to make the pieces nearer the front slightly shorter. So let's get our bird and our small cloud here and just very, very carefully snip a little bit off the bottom of the pipe cleaner. And about the same off the little cloud. Now, let's push our little cloud in next, just in front of the sun. Because it's shorter, it means we can see all of the pieces. And now, last but not least, let's put our bird flying in front of the clouds. Now we can gently bend the pipe cleaners so we can see everything. Look at this. It's a wonderful wobbly picture. And you can make all sorts of pictures wobble. How about a wobbly aeroplane flying through a wobbly sky? An underwater wobbly sea picture with lots of wobbly fish and wobbly seaweed. Or even a sunflower with a wobbly bee. And those pictures remind me of my jelly here. <laughs> All wibbly and wobbly. <laughs> oh, no, not a sneeze now. And my jelly! Jelly everywhere. I'll just sort that out. Oh, there, that's better. <laughs> oh, great! It's minute make time. Here's what we're going to make today. It's an ugly rock. It's ugly, but it looks great, just like me. <laughs> and to make an ugly rock, you will need a glue stick. A black pen, a pair of scissors, some white paper, a very small fluffy pom-pom and a button. Now we'll also need a stone and some googly eyes. Now you can get these from an art and craft shop. I'll be back in a tick. I've got them. And here they are. There's our stone and our two googly eyes. Now, do you think it's possible to make this in just one minute? No way! Oh, well, I think I can do it, although I will have to be very quick. Don't worry, though, I'll remind you how to do it at the end. Let's make it in a minute! Get your clean rock and glue on some googly eyes like this. Here's one eye. 
There's another one. There, two eyes. Now let's give him some funny hair with a pom-pom. Put plenty of glue on there and then stick that on. There we go. And then a nose with a button. There we go. Oh, it needs a bit more glue on the pom-pom. Go on, stick on. There we go. Now let's make a mouth by drawing a funny one on some white paper. Halfway there. There we go, like that. Now I'm going to cut these out very carefully with some scissors. There we go. Round there like that. Round and round we go. Don't forget scissors are sharp, so you can take a bit longer with that bit if you like. Now I need to get some glue and glue it on to the mouth of my ugly rock. I did it. Only just. With time to spare, actually, Toki. And if, like me, you've got more than a minute, you could paint your ugly rock a brilliant bright colour, like this green one. Or how about trying a yellow ugly rock with a square button for its nose? Or a blue ugly rock with a bigger pom-pom for its hair? Or why not try making a bigger ugly rock with more eyes and painted spots? Ugly rocks made in a minute. They're ugly, but beautiful. Why don't you try and make one? Here's a reminder of how to do it. Let's go back to the beginning and take another look. Glue the googly eyes onto a stone. Stick on a pom-pom for hair. And stick on a button for a nose. Draw and cut out a funny, ugly mouth and stick it onto your stone to finish your ugly rock. Why don't you try and make it in a minute? Yeah. <laughs> Please excuse me, still getting ready. I'm running a bit late today, but there, just in time, I'm ready to make some amazing art with you. <laughs> Whoa, wait a minute. In all the rush getting ready, I forgot to brush my teeth. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll just pop upstairs and get my toothbrush. Won't be long. That's better. <laughs> Ooh, my toothbrush. It's given me a great idea. Let's try something. Try splattering paint with a toothbrush and making this fantastic splatter stencil picture. Let's make it. As well as an old toothbrush, we'll need some other things from the doodle drawers. Some card and a pair of scissors. Some paint and a pencil. A piece of cardboard and some water. Whoa! Now, to make a splatter stencil picture like this one here, it's a good idea to put down some paper and put on some old clothes or an apron. Whoa! <laughs> now, let's start by folding a sheet of card in half. And now we're going to draw half of a shape along the folded edge. Draw half a diamond shape, which is a triangle. Let's do another one. Move that over there and fold another piece of card. Let's draw another half shape. How about half a square shape, which is a rectangle? There we go. One more, I think. Another piece of card. This time, I'm going to draw a zigzag shape. Draw half of it, like this. Now, keep your card folded and cut out your shapes. But remember to start cutting at the folded edge. Be careful, though, because scissors are sharp. <laughs> <laughs> when you unfold your cards, you will now have diamond shapes, square shapes and zigzag shapes. These will become our stencils. Now, a stencil is a really special shape that you can paint through and also paint around. Make as many stencil shapes as you want to, but remember to keep both parts that you cut out. Now we need to make a special watery, painty mixture that's made up of half water and half paint. Ooh. And now, give it a stir. Make as many different colours of painting mixture as you like. 
Now, let's get a large piece of paper. There we go. And lay down one of our stencils. Let's go for the diamond first, I think. Here's the fun part. We're going to get an old toothbrush and we're going to dip it into the painty mixture and then flick paint all over the stencil using a piece of cardboard like this. Flick the paint by moving the brush away from you across the edge of the cardboard. Remember to move the brush away from you, otherwise you'll get covered in paint. There we go. Now if we carefully lift off the stencil, we've got a diamond shape where the paint has splattered inside. Rinse off your toothbrush. And now let's try a different colour with a different stencil. Let's use the zigzag shape with green paint. Make sure you use a clean piece of cardboard every time you change colour. Brilliant! Let's do another one. This time, let's flick paint around the outside of one of our cutout shapes, like this square. Let's have a look again carefully. Take off the stencil. Wow, what a brilliant square shape. Try using lots of colors and as many stencils as you can fit on the page. This is great fun. <laughs> And there it is, your very own splatter stencil picture. It looks fantastic, but don't just stop there. You can use as many different colours and stencil shapes as you want. This one has brightly coloured paint on a blue background. And this card's made with star-shaped stencils. Fantastic splatter stencil pictures made by flicking paint off your old trusty toothbrush. <laughs> Oh, sorry about that. Hang on. There we go. Much better. I've just beaten my record of bounces. Let's see if I can do any better. All right, here we go. Ready? One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> Lots of splats. That gives me a great idea. Let's try something. Try making a brilliant bouncing ball painting and create your own splat art. Let's make it. We'll need some things from the doodle drawers. Some tennis balls. Some water and a bowl. <laughs> A toy skeleton? Ah, no! No, we don't need one of those. Some paint. And some paper. Oh. Now it's best to do this outside as it can get a bit messy and it's a good idea to put on some old clothes or an apron. Hmm. Now to make your very own splat picture like this one here, you first have to put your paper on the floor. Now we're ready to make a painty mixture. So get yourself a bowl and fill it with half paint and half water. And now give it a mix so it's nice and runny. There. And now we're ready for the really fun and really messy bit. Now let's get a tennis ball. There we go. And put it into the bowl. Now let the ball soak up all the painty mixture, roll it around, there we go, and when it's full, pick it up and we're ready to go! Here we go! Oh, look at that! What a great effect! Let's do another one! 
<laughs> and you can do as many splats as you like. Fantastic! Let's do a big one! Ooh. You can use as many balls and as many colours as you like. You could even get a friend to help you. Ooh, fancy some splat art, Mr Maker? Don't mind if I do, Mr Maker. That was great fun! Doesn't it look fantastic? Why don't you have a go? Bye, Mr Maker! Bye! <laughs> Let's make a picture out of toy cars! Wow! Can you guess what it's going to be? Wow! It's an amazing ambulance! Hey, hey, Mr. Maker! Oh, hello, everyone! Watch this! I wonder what they're up to? I'm grey! I am red! I am orange! Everybody. See you next time. Now it's time to frame it. Frame it. Frame it. Now take a look at this. What a fantastic sawdust picture. It's great fun to do and makes a picture so good you'll be able to frame it. You will need some coloured paper, wrapping paper, gloopy PVA glue, scissors, a thin black pen, a brush, googly eyes, buttons and sawdust, which you can buy from a pet shop. To make your picture, draw the outline of a dog onto some coloured paper, or you can draw any animal you like. Now cover your drawing with gloopy glue and sprinkle sawdust all over it. Shake off any extra sawdust and sweep it up. Then carefully cut your sawdust dog out and stick it onto some colourful wrapping paper. And why not make your dog a collar by sticking on a thin strip of wrapping paper like this. Stick on a button to finish off the collar and add another button for the nose. Last of all, stick on two googly eyes to finish off your super sawdust dog. Doesn't it look amazing? What a brilliant picture! Why don't you have a go? And then... Frame it! Great! And as well as sawdust, I like making pictures out of all sorts of things. Well, I'm just reading this book all about the different animals in the world. Now, if you could be an animal or a different type of creature, what would you be? Hmm. I think I'd be a brilliant bird flying through the clouds. But there's only one problem with that. I can't fly. <laughs> no, I don't think I'd make a very good bird after all. Although it does give me a great idea. Let's make something. Why not make your own brilliant bird's nest out of string? Let's make it! We'll need some things from the doodle drawers. Some string and an old plastic bowl. Some paints. Some pom-poms. Some PVA gloopy glue and some shredded tissue paper. 
orange card, white stickers and a pen. Oh! Now, to make a brilliant, brightly coloured bird's nest, like this one here, you first have to start off with three bowls. There's one, two and three. Now, in these three bowls, we're going to put a large bundle of string in each one. Now we need to add our paint. You can choose whatever colours you like, but I'm going to choose green, red and yellow. Let's put some green into the first bowl. Now the red and the yellow in the third bowl. And now into each bowl, we're going to add a dollop of gloopy glue. Now let's give them all a mix. Now we'll move our bowls over to here. And then we're going to bring in an old plastic bowl like this. Now make sure you check with an adult first that it's okay to use it. Then turn it upside down on a tray like this. Then we're going to cover the whole bowl in special gloopy string. Let's start with the green string. <laughs> now we can add the red and the yellow, but it's a good idea because I've got such mucky fingers to wipe your hands first. Make sure you cover the bowl in lots of layers of different coloured string. Like this. Then you can leave it to dry overnight. Good night. <laughs> Morning. <laughs> when it's all dry, you can very carefully push the bowl out. There we are. And you're left with a lovely nest. Oh, all that's missing now is a bird. Hmm, here it is. And to make a bird, you need two pom-poms. Now, it looks good if you use one large one and one small one. And we're going to glue those together. There we go. Now we can add some eyes to our bird by using white stickers. Add black dots with a pen for pupils and stick them on. All that's missing now is the bird's beak. So for that, we need a piece of orange card. And we're going to cut out a triangle shape. Be careful though, because scissors are sharp. Oh, oh, oh. And then stick it on to your bird. Now you can put your bird into its new home. So let's bring our nest back in and make it nice and comfortable by adding some lovely soft shredded tissue paper. And then the bird can sit in the middle. Lovely, a beautiful bird in its brilliant new home. And you can also try some other ideas. How about a glittery bird's nest made by sprinkling glitter on your gloopy string? Or even a really big bird's nest with lots of birds in it. Oh, great. Oh, I'm just reading this book about birds. It's very interesting. As well as being able to swim and fly, birds can also sing. Yes, it's true. <laughs> I wonder if they can do anything else. Do you think they can play games? Hmm. On my beak, Mr. Penguin! Goal! <laughs> no, that's taking it too far. Birds playing games, honestly. <laughs> or is it? Flapping feathers, I'm having an idea. Let's make something. Make a fantastically funny bird hoop game to play with your friends. Let's make it. We'll need some things from the doodle drawers. <laughs> a large washing liquid bottle with a large handle. <laughs> some tissue paper and a pen. Some feathers. Some paint. Some gloopy PVA glue and a colourful paper plate. 
<laughs> Whoa! Now we also need some play sand, which you can find in a toy shop. I'll be back in a tick. <coughs> I've got it! <laughs> Our play sand. Now have a look at this funny bird hoop game. And here's how it works. You have a hoop, you have a funny bird, throw the hoop over the bird, and hooray! It's a fantastic game! Now to make one, you need to start off with a large washing liquid bottle like this and you need to make sure that it's nice and clean. Now it's a good idea to get an adult to help you with this bit. Then unscrew the top and we're going to very carefully pour in some play sand. Now we need to pour in just enough sand to make it nice and heavy so the bottle doesn't topple over. Now we can screw the lid back on tightly. Now we're going to cover the entire bottle in ripped up pieces of tissue paper and a very special gloopy mixture, which is made out of half gloopy glue and half water. Let's give it a mix. There we go, it's nicely mixed up now. And we're going to make sure that we cover the whole bottle in the gloopy mixture and the pieces of tissue paper. And when we're finished, we'll leave it to dry. When it's nice and dry, we can start painting. How about we paint on two large white dots for eyes, a nice bright orange beak, and then you can paint the rest of the bird whatever colour you like. It's up to you, but I think I might do this bird blue. When the paint is dry, we can add some details with a black pen. And for a finishing touch, let's give our bird some nice feathery wings. So for that, of course, we need our feathers here. Here they are. They're all ready to be put on with some gloopy glue. Now press on your feathers like this and then hold them down in place until they dry and then do the same on the other side. What a fantastic feathery effect. He looks great. Let's just move our bird over to here because now we need to make a hoop with a paper plate. A nice colored one like this looks really good. We also need a ball of modeling clay and a very sharp pencil. And what we're going to do is put the ball of modeling clay underneath the plate like that. And then very carefully with the sharp pencil, we're going to push through the middle of the plate into the clay to make a hole. Then if we take out the pencil, remove the clay like that, we're left with a plate with a hole in the middle. Now this hole will help us cut out the middle of the plate. Now we're going to cut very carefully all the way around here. Now this is a bit tricky, so you might want to ask an adult to help you with this bit. <laughs> here we go. Now be very careful with your scissors, because they're sharp, you know. Oh yes. <laughs> You can make lots of rings, so as many people as you like can play. Fantastic! And you don't have to stop there. How about trying some other ideas? This one has a green body and a winking eye. And this one's a multicoloured bird with multicoloured feathers. Or you can use a much smaller bottle for a glittery baby bird. Now all that's left to do is have a game. 
Now remember, the aim of the game is to throw the hoop over the bird. Drum roll, please. <laughs> oh, that was close. Hey, I did it. <laughs> well done, Mr. Maker. Thank you, Mr. Crazy Bird. It was great fun playing with you. <laughs> oh, it gets messy doing all this art. But one of the best things about making things is that you can often turn one thing into another. You can turn some pencil shavings into a lovely picture. You can turn an egg box into a dog. But what do you think we could turn this into? A useful but quite boring looking cleaning up sponge. Hmm. This gives me an idea. Let's make it sponge toast and tissue paper baked beans. A work of art that's good enough to eat. As well as our sponge, we'll need some things from the doodle drawers. Some tissue paper. A plastic knife and fork. Some sticky white PVA glue. Some paint. Some plastic sheep. No, not really. I'm just messing around. We don't need these. And a paper plate. Whoa! Now, to make your sponge toast and tissue paper baked beans like this, first take your scissors and trim your sponge so it's rounded at one end and so it looks a bit more like a slice of toast. Be careful, though, because scissors are sharp. Then get some white paint and mix it with some brown paint to make a light brown toast colour. There. Now brush your paint mixture all over your sponge. Now paint brown around the edges for a crust effect. It looks just like a piece of toast. Let's stick it on our plate. Now whilst that dries, Get some orange tissue paper, or you could use white tissue paper and colour it in orange, and roll lots and lots of small, tiny tissue paper balls very tightly. These will be our baked beans. Yummy. There's one. And there. It's two. Here's a whole plateful. Now, let's stick some beans on our toast and plate. Now mix some white sticky PVA glue with some orange paint. This makes the baked bean sauce, which we can pour all over our beans. Now for a finishing touch, a plastic fork 
and a plastic knife. Stick everything down and leave it to dry. All finished! Now, if you like the idea of turning this into something different, have a look at some of the other ideas you could make. Try making sponge sandwiches with tissue paper lettuce, cardboard tomato and foam ham and cheese. Mmm! Or how about sponge fish fingers, sponge chips, tissue paper peas and ketchup made from a blob of red paint. So the next time you see a boring old sponge, you'll know you can turn it into something far more interesting. Wow, look at that. This is great because I was feeling a bit hungry, actually.